do, do, do. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Of course there are ambulances and Hey, Mary, how you doing? Have like 10 things going on. I'm with coffee and ready should I grab a shot of whiskey as well. Um, this stream is going to be chill. This particular stream is going to be pretty chill. But the stream after this, you might need the whiskey. And you might need to drink some for me. I'm just saying. Um, let me go over here. I have to share this. Hey, Leanne, how you doing? That is not, why do I always? Okay, we were having problems. The internet was running slow. So I have um, Marcus checking to see if the video is okay. I have that song, What is Love, stuck in my head. That is not right. I'm not happy with this situation. We might need the whiskey. Phone problems, gotta switch to computer. Right on, right on. Uh, I might be here for a minute anyway. Um, trying to share things on here. That I think is shared. <sighs> My nose is going insane too. So fun times. You could do any day now. Man, y'all, I'm angry with Facebook after yesterday. Okay, I think I have it shared everywhere. Y'all, yesterday, a friend of mine messaged me on Facebook Messenger. I didn't get the messages <clears throat> until later. So I messaged her back, hey, Jackie, and messaged her with my phone number so she could just text me, right? And apparently she didn't get those messages until later. And it was a bad time for her. So Facebook is just, Facebook Messenger is unreliable. Hey, uh, Ballistic, it showed up in your feed? Wow. That's good. We Oh, so everyone, um, if you are subscribed, go and check and make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube. Um, 
Apparently we're doing that thing again. <coughs> Why? I don't know. It, I don't know. It's YouTube. <laughs> oh, Lord. <sighs> we're sharing Jackie Sunshine. I couldn't find that. Oh, right, right, right. Is the internet being weird? Am I still on? I'm going to be asking all of the questions today. Um, let me know if there's any pauses or any of that. Um, because our Wi-Fi is being weird. Because New Orleans. Okay. Look, I got, that's probably for later, and then this. I got all the coffee. <laughs> all right. Oh, y'all, I'm a professional up in here. I know exactly what I am doing. Oh, Lord. Okay. So anyone who's on the Discord, if it like pauses or anything, let me know. Um, okay, we'll just talk while you're gone with the doggo ballistic. ballistic. Um, let me know in the Discord if the screen freezes or any of that, because that's a possibility tonight, apparently. Um, let's just like chill for a minute. I was, it was requested that I share the eyeshadow palettes that I use. So today I was playing, I was playing a lot and I used several colors out of here. This is mostly a matte palette. Um, so I use some pink down here, these two oranges and some yellow doing the sunset thing that I love so much. And also because the other one is mostly a matte palette. I used the pink, some pink, some orange, and some yellow. So for Elsa, there's your pretty blue. Um, so, I don't know if y'all can even see, but it turned out really, really nice. Which palette? <laughs> The Fade to Hue or the first one, which, what is the name of that first one? It's, the first one is not a bad palette, actually, and I haven't had any allergic reactions to it. Um, this first one, ah, hold on, I'm covering the name. Avani Greg for the Beebs. It's a Morphe palette. Um, And it's just got all the colors in it. And it's, it's mostly mattes. You have two shimmers or like glitters actually. Um, yeah, this silver, which is a chunky glitter and this like bronzy gold color. Let me see. Yeah, that's glitter. Um, so yeah, so actually this is a decent companion palette to the ColourPop Fade into Hue um, because the, the Fade into Hue has a lot of shimmers and glitters and glittery mattes, whatever you call them. Wow, that is, okay, look, can you see that? 
Hold on. I have like the best skin for this. I say that jokingly because there's no telling what this glitter is going to do to my wrist. <laughs> I don't know if you can really see it all that well, but it's, ooh, wow. That is blinding. Okay. I know what I'm using tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. All right. And I was scolded for neglecting to talk about the um, lip products that I use. Um, so most of my, um, a majority of my makeup is ColourPop because I have no reactions to that at all. So I know it's safe, right? So um, yes, it is a beautiful copper. It's like a, mm, a brownish copper rather than a reddish copper, if that makes sense. But it is really pretty. Um, and the mattes are really good. You, they do need like a primer underneath. Jovia's Place eye primer good stuff um and this is bff lippy uh lippy pencil and color pop this is a lippy stick in caramella yeah those are good colors um so yeah and i have like a little bit of blush on which is ColourPop. i'd like a palette with a copper silver gold but usually i have to find the related shades i usually already have ah um with ColourPop, they have the super shock shadows which are um very shiny like hold on I only have three of them, but man, a little bit goes a long way. And this is kind of, it looks like a taupe, like it looks kind of bland, just pale, right? Yeah. This is not the normal color that I would go for. Um, but man. See, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this light. Yeah. Um, this is like, like, I would say true gold, but it's not like overwhelmingly glittery. Um, I really, really like this Super Shock Shadow a lot. It is nice. So I would say check out their Super Shocks at Ulta. Um, here in my area, you can find them like $3 a piece, which is not bad because that will last a while. <laughs> you just got to make sure to keep, keep the top, top, uh, tight on it so they don't like dry out or anything. Um, but yeah, those less than not even five minutes and my eyes are done. Um, this, what I'm wearing today, it took a bit longer. It was my first time using these, uh, colors with that palette, so. And I was going to do pink and green. That did not, it, mm, do not blend those two colors together with this palette. <laughs> it did not turn out good. Um, that is a really good price. Um, I don't know if they're doing that everywhere. But um, at the Ulta near me, it seems like their Super Shocks are almost always on sale for $3. So, um, And then I think they have the Super Shock blushes, which are pretty good too. So, yeah. I'm, I should really be a, a salesperson for ColourPop. What, what am I doing? I miss my calling, y'all. <laughs>
I need to email them and beg them not to change the formula of their mascara, <laughs> their lip products, their lotion, anything. Just keep it all the same. <laughs> Don't change it. Oh God, that would that would hurt if they changed their formulas. All right, so we have a good amount of people in here. So let's let's get started and talk about what to do if um, something traumatic happens. Now I'm going to say this from the perspective of um, someone who worked in law enforcement, right? Like I did, um, but also someone who you know worked as a victim's advocate. I think these two key points are kind of important. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I mean, the puppy was probably happy to be outside. <laughs> um, maybe we should get a dog and <clears throat> force me to go outside and be among the alien insects. Um, all right, so trauma can come from any number of places. It can come from a car accident, uh, you know, armed robbery, um, carjacking. You know, there are so many different ways that trauma can enter your life, and it, it, usually it's random, right? Okay, so you're going to have your instincts kick in. Fight, flight, panic, or freeze. Um, and it's different for each person. And you may have a combination, okay? You could freeze, panic a little bit, and then decide to run. So it isn't always just one thing. Um, that's, I think, a common misunderstanding. So what happens when your instincts kick in and something traumatic is happening? Your adrenaline is going to flood your system, right? Um, you might get tunnel vision, or you might get expanded vision. And this means that your, your brain is trying to either hyper-focus on what's happening or hyper-focus on what's happening around you. Um, and it can go back and forth. So... So there's a lot going on all at one time. You may feel like time has slowed down and that's for a reason. It's a defense mechanism of your brain that helps your, your brain process what is happening and help you to survive. And this is this also is instinct. So over the course of human history, you know, back in the day, uh, we needed that because we were not the apex predator, right? We we were lower, very very low on that on that list. So, how does that translate to now, right? If you have something traumatic happen, like I can use myself as an example, um, if something traumatic is going to happen, and if I can see it coming ahead of time. Like it's something behind me that's going to be slightly different, right? So if I see something coming, let's say it's a car accident, I will tell myself, this is going to happen, relax. Do not tense up. Because when you tense up in a car accident, that's when you get broken bones, typically. Um, this is what I've been told by several EMS, you know, people and you know, first responders, etc. cetera. Um, you just relax. That's why people who are drunk and get into car accidents, a lot of the time, a, a lot of the time, don't end up with um, broken bones because usually they're very relaxed, right? <clears throat> so just relax. Um, it may suck. It may not suck. Either way, you know, in that kind of situation, there's really not all that much you can do, really. But if it's a violent crime, S A R, what have you, that is different and harder to advise on what you should do because it depends on the person you're dealing with, 
and what their intentions are. Um, it depends on you and what your instinct is, like what your instinctual reaction is, right? Okay. There's one thing I want to say because it's really important. If, let's say, you're carjacked or grabbed or something along those lines, you want to do everything humanly possible that you possibly can to not be transported to a second location. That may be really hard. You may have a gun held on you. Trigger warning. I forgot. I'm, I do apologize. All the trigger warnings. Um, my FTOs said that more than likely it would be better to be shot than to be transported to a second location. Because if they're trying to take you from one area, they're probably trying to take you because it's more populated, right? So if it's more populated, there's more of a chance that you will get help quickly. Um, can confirm that getting shot fucking hurts. But <clears throat> if you're transported to a second location, your risk of being killed goes way up. Bear that in mind. Now your instinct may be to freeze, but you can control that to a degree, right? You can talk to yourself in your mind. Tell yourself, wait, observe, look for an opportunity, and then take that opportunity. And this is why I highly recommend Crab McGraw because I learned so much about like how to spot an opening and what to do where and just all of that. Um, and it gives you kind of a, a, a sense of confidence, like a feeling of confidence within yourself. And a lot of the time that confidence will translate to an offender that, oh, this maybe this person I should just leave alone. Literally, this has helped me. <laughs> um, I was walking through the quarter. I worked in the quarter and lived in the quarter at the time. Um, and I just got off a late, late shift, late. It was like three or four in the morning. And I was walking from one end of Bourbon Street to the other to go to a restaurant for breakfast, which was really dinner. And um, this guy was walking behind me step for step. And y'all know what I mean when I say that. <laughs> um, but then he started to walk faster up behind me. And I, at the time I carried a friend in my boot and I whipped it out, opened it up and turned around because I knew what was happening, right? You get that gut instinct and that gut instinct tells you something's wrong, listen to it. Um, I turned around, looked at him and just kind of looked at him and he looked at me and he said, crazy fucking bitch, and turned around and walked the other way, back down Bourbon. Okay. I made it to the restaurant and told the waiter there, the one waiter, um, like I went there almost every night, um, you know, told him what happened. And then it was maybe... I can't remember how long later, a couple days, a week, I'm not sure. I go back into that restaurant and the waiter brings over a newspaper and shows me. And I had said, you know, when it, after it happened, I went in the restaurant and wrote down what happened. <clears throat> Description, all of that. Um, and the waiter, you know, gave me this newspaper and sure enough on the, I think it was the front page, a guy had attacked a woman who was walking from Bourbon Street to her vehicle same description, it was that guy. But I was the crazy one, according to him. But it was the same guy. <laughs> so in that situation, I was internally talking with myself when he was walking up behind me. And 
Do you want to say hi? Sure. Since I'm sure about today. <laughs> hey -o. Interlude. All of the loud cars. All of the loud cars. Mm -hmm. Always. <laughs> You're dressed. Yes, I'm dressed today. He's going to go pick up baby girl and groceries. Mm -hmm. So. This is Mayor, your ballistic. Hey, Jackie. And everybody else who's watching. We had, have a good crowd here today. Yeah. I don't know. It's like 10 people watching. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Good times. Um, okay, so mentally, um, because of my training, I think Krav Maga had a lot to do with it too, actually. And also just street smarts, right? I was having an internal dialogue with myself that something was going to happen, not to freeze or panic, but to be strong within myself. And, <laughs> and, um, to prepare, to be ready, right? Um, so when I turned around and looked at him, there's something that I wish every woman would learn. <laughs> um, what did you mean to say? I'm curious now. Yeah, go give him five. I was about to go. High five. <laughs> oh, well, I mean. Um, shoot, what was I saying? Oh, the death glare. When you're angry, access your anger. Sometimes it does help. In that situation, it helps. It made him back right the fuck off, right? So... Um, me accessing my anger and my inner, I will cut you <laughs> and smile. Um, that made all the dif difference, right? I had, I, I'm from what was described in the newspaper. I'm pretty sure that if I hadn't done that, he would have just atta attacked me. Like, let's see, with some offenders, that they like a challenge. So, what works on one person may not work on a other, another person. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say it depends. Um, and that's also why I say, watch, observe, um, pay attention to their body language, facial expressions, all of that. Um, and also, you know, yet again, I highly, highly recommend Israeli Krav Maga. Can't recommend that enough. Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so so then you have the after effect of whatever traumatic experience. Um, what do you do after? Now, after the trauma or the, the whatever situation is over, the adrenaline in your body is, is going to, your body's going to process that and it's going to, um, your adrenaline's going to drop. And that's what is called adrenaline, adrenaline drop. At least here, that's what we call it. Um, so you may get tired, kind of lethargic and, um, shaky right there are physiological effects to trauma <clears throat> not <clears throat> not just psychological now i'm not a shrink or a counselor um but i have seen this a lot like a lot a lot <laughs> in various different forms right so uh one thing that does help 
I said it before, I'll say it again, hydrate, drink some water, hydrating your body and your brain helps. Um, uh, most of the EMTs I have talked with, or like first responders in general, usually say like something like Gatorade, Powerade, something like that, is gonna help replenish your electrolytes because trauma is, uh, trauma is a strain on your body and your brain. Your brain is working overtime. Your brain becomes a supercomputer, even more so than it already is, um, in order to help you survive, right? So replacing your ele electrolytes is really important. Um, <clears throat> and yet again, talking with yourself internally, um, it's over, you survived, you are here, everything's gonna be okay, if that's your situation. Um, and in most, not all, but most jurisdictions, um, with certain kinds of trauma, uh, I know for sure, S, A, and R, you can ask for a victim's advocate, and when they get to you, ask if they have resources for trauma counseling, like immediate, as soon as possible, trauma counseling. And with this, usually, either it's completely free or there's a sliding pay scale. Um, if it's SA or R, you can call RAIN um, and also the domestic violence hotline can help with certain things. Um, and I've seen them help people that where it wasn't even a domestic violence thing, just people automatically called them and they still had resources to put, put you in touch with, okay? Um, so you can take control of the situation before, during, and after to a degree. Just how I was trained was to visualize and kind of study different possible scenarios, right? What, what, what would I do if I'm in the shower and somebody breaks in my house, right? I have a plan for that. <laughs> Um, you can call rape crisis in the UK, I think. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Um, so <clears throat> with law enforcement in the U S I don't know how it is in the UK, but in the U S some jurisdictions, um, kind of limited, like they don't have all the funding they should have or, um, you know, some officers may not even really know. So if you say, hey, I want a victim's advocate here, and if they try to kind of brush that off, tell them, no, I need a victim's advocate here. Now, with me, now, make it happen. Um, a victim's advocate is there to help you advocate for yourself. And it can be very hard to do if you've been traumatized, right? So on that, that should be your, your hill to die on. If an officer is not taking you seriously, just be adamant. Be calm, polite, or try to be. Um, if you if you're having an, an, an emotional response, that's okay. That's normal. Uh, if an officer doesn't understand that, maybe they shouldn't be an officer because hello, this is what I did. <laughs> so be adamant. This is what I need. Um, if you're if you go through a traumatic experience, you know, especially S, S A and R, um, the sooner you get to trauma counseling, the better. The better you will be in the long run. Um, from all of the studies and whatnot that I've read, it looks like the sooner you get to, to trauma counseling, the fewer symptoms you might have from PTSD, you know, things like that. So. You know, call Rain, call the DV, the National DV Hotline, um, and ask them if they have resources to trauma counseling. Now, 
counseling is expensive, but there are um, resources out there where, I mean, it, there's, uh, there's a resource here where you don't pay anything. Um, I think, I can't remember if it's fully subsidized and part or part Medicaid or something. I don't remember, but our services are completely overstretched. All of it. Wow. You can ask for a responsible adult if you have mental health issues and dealing with police. <clears throat> I mean, it kind of sounds like your country is trying to privatize all of this, and that would be a bad, bad idea. <laughs> bad. <laughs> Things are bad here in the U.S. Um, just anything health related is extremely expensive. Counseling really helps me after my trauma. Yeah, me too. Yep. Um, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now. I probably wouldn't be talking to y'all right now if I hadn't went to counseling. So um, it's just a matter of finding out what resources you have in your area. And then there's stuff online too now. So um, uh, somebody had said to me that the National DV Hotline had upgraded like certain resource things and some of it was online. So 100% get help ASAP. I didn't get that and my mental health spiraled. Mental health issues are cumulative. Yes, they are. I didn't go right away afterward either. I waited, I think two years and I wish I knew better. I wish I'd gone sooner. Um, okay. So the after effects of trauma, trauma, like physical trauma, emotional, psychological, let's say you're carjacked or <clears throat> it's an armed robbery or, uh, you know, someone breaks in your house. All of these are traumas. They are. Um, How do you handle the after effects? But then also there's um, with S, A, and R, it seems like in our culture, we act like if once your physical body is healed, you're fine. And that's not the case. Um, okay, be careful. Dr. Armani on YouTube is a clinical psychologist. She mainly focuses on NA, but a lot of the info would be revealing, relevant <laughs> to other trauma. I hate my keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Um, just because your physical body has healed, it doesn't mean that your, your brain so trauma can cause brain damage, right? We don't talk about that in this culture. We don't even really acknowledge it. You know, it's like, oh, well, you were hard. Well, you're fine now. What, that was like three years ago. Get over it. No, baby. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> um, okay. So let's say... I'll use me as an example. I have PTSD. That I was diagnosed with PTSD. And from that, I have um, OCD. It's not like there are levels of OCD, right? It's like a spectrum. And mine's not too bad. It's manageable. Um, yep, usually the frontal lobe that helps with emotional control. Yes. Um, uh, I also have, it's this weird thing where I want to go out and socialize and do stuff and whatnot, but then I don't really want to leave my house. It's not agoraphobia, agoraphobia, but it's kind of akin to that. I don't know how really to explain it. I am a hermit, but then I've really, I've always been a hermit to a degree. Um, so...
Can you all hang tight for just one second? I completely forgot to do this and I, I completely forgot to do this. I'll be right back. Social maybe, but would rather not go out with too many people. I've heard that a lot. So if if I need a break with a long time, yes, yes. Actually, there was a, a place I used to go and hang, and they had like a back door entrance. Not, not really an entrance, a back door. And I would go out to the back and just kind of chill, you know, because there's a decent sized group of people. And I would just go for, you know, a few minutes and just chill a little bit. Um, social anxiety, yeah. <laughs> social anxiety, throwing the keyboard out the window in a moment. <laughs> Aha, I found it. Okay. All right, so, so I've been doing this for years now, and I think I am somewhat qualified to speak on what you do when you have a PTSD trigger. Um, you know, so for me, it's um, the OCD, as we have seen, my OCD can be triggered. <laughs> Germophobia, don't even get me started on KJ, okay? Just let's not go there. Um, social anxiety, panic attacks on occasion, although those have cut down pretty, pretty low. I'm, I'm proud of myself. Um, being a hermit, I don't know what else to call it. Um, yeah, okay, so what happens when I am triggered? And I'm actually getting better at seeing when, eh, yes, no, eh. When I'm triggered, I understand how that feels. Um, and also like Marcus and several of my friends understand and, you know, pick up on it pretty quickly. Like um, one of my girlfriends would be like, hey, do you need to, let's go out back. Just let's go. <laughs> um, which is a good thing. It's better if people know that you have this and we need to get over the social stigmatization of people who have PTSD, just because you have PTSD, it doesn't mean you're going to get violent or any of that. Um, it just me means that you are directly in the middle of a healing journey that is downplayed to the extreme, and it shouldn't be. Um, what's funny is in a lot of indigenous cultures, you have healing mechanisms that I think are better than what we currently have in this culture. You have sweats and you know there'll, there'll be a big huge feast and build a sweat and do the sweat and you know several other things and it helps you work it out. I don't know how to fully explain that, but it can't confirm. Um, okay, so if you are triggered and it's bad, to the point that you want to leave a chat because there's somebody on there triggering people and you're crying 
and you're having an emotional response to something that's being said, y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, there are many things you can do to help you. First, hydrate water. I mean, if you don't have water, if you only have a soda, I would prefer water for you. Water is going to hydrate your body and your brain, right? And that's going to help you feel better. Like, you may not feel it, but your body will, if that makes sense. All right. Triggering your senses. So smell. This is cherry incense. How, how can you do the triggering of your senses with your scent? Um in a good way and sneaky so no one knows um i can't wear perfume so i'll wear something like this so it's um that is not gonna oh it's a perfumed oil and it's dark musk and i used to have a bunch of these i actually need to get more Hey, Leanne, how you doing? Um, also, hair products, shit you not. <laughs> this stuff is really good, too. I like this stuff. Um, what brand is this? OGX. Ah, I can't read that writing. It's so small. Um, this stuff has a really nice scent to it. And also, it's that... You get that textural feel of the oil and then putting it in your hair and doing this with your hair can be very soothing, right? Um, this stuff, love this stuff, love it. Lavender is very soothing. I did my hair this morning, so yeah, I agree. yeah. Um, this is not exactly practical to take around everywhere though. That's why I do like this um because you can just toss it in your purse something happens bust it out go like this is gonna leak as well so you know um yet again if you're in your house air freshener so my house usually smells really good when people walk in there typically people are like wow this you know we have a um Oh, what are the, what's the thing you put water in it and the essential oils and it, a diffuser? We have one of those um, in the living room. So that's one way. And this I highly recommend, just a little perfumed oil. You know what I mean? Highly recommend to have that just on your person somewhere. So if you're out and about and you're triggered, you just dab a little bit on, you're good to go. Everything's cool. Yes, I love my, I love the diffuser, love it. Um, really strong chewing gums, yes. And also, um, you know, that's a textural thing along with taste and you're working, you're chewing. So you're, you know what I mean? So that's several different ways that you're triggering, triggering senses. Um, frankincense flowing behind me right now, right? I may have to put some of that on uh, in a little bit. Um, okay, so with texture, with your sense of your skin, your skin is your largest organ. It's all over your body. <laughs> um, what I like to do is carry a scarf. I have a couple of different kinds of scarves. You know, get get a silk one, uh, velvet. If you like velvet, then velvet is really good for that. Um, and just, you can tie it to your purse if you need it, it's right there. You can grab it with your hand and fill up your scarf, you know? Um, bop it around you and you've, you've got like basically a blanket, you know? Um, also think about I, I think about the clothing that I wear and how it feels. So this, even this shirt has like a interesting texture to it. Um, and some clothing can trigger memory, right? So let's say, um, I like 
going barefoot to feel more grounded. Actually, that's scientifically proven to actually help you feel better walking around barefoot outside. Um, I put the scent right on the scarf. I was just going to say, put put the scent on the scarf, and that's two for, that's a two for. Um, okay, so with memories, if you have a pair of pants that, you know, have really good memories attached to them, like these pants I'm wearing right now, I used to wear when I was studying dance. So then I have a, just a multitude of memories I can access. Um, <clears throat> cold on your skin at the back of your neck or wrist. Yep. 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 Uh, cold on the back of your skin, on on your skin at the back of your neck or wrist will cool you down quickly if you overheat with anxiety. The temp change also can help to stop disassociation. Yeah. But also, um, what the? Ah. Uh, Holistic Rolo, I am so sorry. I just blocked you when I was trying to pin your comment. I cannot believe that happened. Technical difficulties are a bitch today. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ballistic, because that was a really good point. As soon as you come back. Oh, Lord. Can I undo this? Let, let me un... Mm. <sighs> yes, so temperature can be used with the textile, like the sensation on your skin as well. So a cold drink, most people don't know that I can put a cold drink right here and I'm triggering one of my senses, right? And then I can drink it and then there's taste and touch and maybe even smell. It's, it won't let me undo it either, you know, because that it's just been that kind of day. Um, if you click on one of her old comments, oh, hold on. Okay, hold on, Jill. I'm gonna go see if I can, fucking hell. It's, I don't see any of her comments anywhere. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, and that was a really good uh, point. No, that was me. That was all me. Um, it said five minutes. She was put on timeout, but I was going, I'm on StreamYards. StreamYards is different from uh, the YouTube live chat thing, whatever. It's been a day. It was hard even getting on here. Like, I don't know what's going on with the internet. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize, ballistic. Keyboards and stuff. All right, so in, there are many different subtle ways that you can, if you're triggered, um, bring yourself current because a lot of the time, if you have a PTSD trigger, your brain might be replaying what happened, the, the initial trauma in the past, right? So you wanna bring yourself to the current present time. Um, and there's a, a, a saying that my counselor taught me, I'm not there, I'm not then, I'm here, I'm now. Um, and that does help. And I'll just say that to myself in my mind, you know, uh, I'm not talking to myself out loud because I already feel crazy when I'm triggered. The last thing I need is for people to think I'm crazy. Okay. <clears throat> also, people, people out there, people, everyone who sees this, stop thinking that people with PTSD are crazy. They are not crazy. 
Um, in fact, uh, that's not, PTSD does not equal insanity. So we've got scent, taste, uh, textile, like sensation of the skin, sight, look around you, what do you see? In your mind, name three things you see of a certain kind, um, four of a certain color, five uh, that you like, five that you dislike, you know, put it together for yourself what works best for you. Some people will do two or three and some will do more. And then sometimes you reach a point where you don't need to do as much, at least for me. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, sound. Now this comes into play for me a lot because I see sound, right? I have a different experience with sound than y'all do. So with sound, I can trigger sight, smell, taste, and textile, textural feeling. So that's four, five. Because I don't just have one kind of synesthesia, I have several. So, um, so if you're a cine, highly recommend having your absolute favorite dive into music on a separate playlist on whatever platform you use and have it ready. And you probably already know that. Um, but for someone who is not a cine, a synesthete, um, what music do you have the best memories with? Um, no worries about the timeout. Sometimes I need a timeout. Sound is taste and touch and sound for me. Right. Right, right. Um, what do you see, smell, taste when you hear someone chewing gum? It depends on how obnoxious the chewing is. <laughs> it depends. It depends on the person. But a lot of the time that is not, they're not good colors and I have to leave the room. Um, so sound can be a double-edged sword for me. It can be a blessing and a curse. Garbage trucks, bad, no. Really loud, untuned motorcycles, no. Mm-mm. Same with cars. Fix your damn mufflers. Um, uh, there are other sounds too. Like I have a list of sounds that are not safe. Um, so what you want to do with the sound though is have your safe music. And it doesn't matter, even if you're not if you're not a city, have you a playlist of music that has those beautiful memories attached or that just hits you. Um, if you have music that gives you the goosebumps, have that ready, like in a good way, right? Have that ready. Um, so, you know, earbuds now, you can put an earbud in, and if you have hair that covers your ears, no one will even know that you have a little bit of music playing and you're self-soothing, right? Um, oh, I forgot. So, one... I think, I don't know if anyone else does this, but this actually does help me a lot. Um, these lip balms from Smith's, this is rose and mandarin lip balm. So, oh Lord, it smells so good. Um, I just want to put it all over my face. This stuff, with this, you're getting smell and taste and also the, the sensation, the feeling, right? And it's just a lip balm, you just, you know, I don't recommend putting this in your purse. They do have like the squeezy bottles um, because these will open um, and that's usually bad. But yeah, um, so there are a multitude of ways that after a trauma, and believe it or not, all of this actually does work 
immediately after trauma. It can help you directly after trauma. The bitch is back. <laughs> Music is weird. Certain notes and chords just taste weird. Yeah. My memories are very much wrapped up in sound and touch, but little vision as I have no mind's eye. Oh, see, I see, I see color, shapes, patterns, all of that in my mind so I can close my eyes and see it, but then I project it too. So it's, if they open, then you get furry mandarin rose lips, right? Yes, that is true. We may have to do a live stream about synesthesia because there are lots, lots of different kinds of synesthesia. Um, and I'm thankful for my synesthesia because I think it did help me a lot in dealing with, you know, the initial trauma and then afterward. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, there are, you know, find, experiment, find what works for you. Maybe, you know, uh, like my dangly earrings, when I put my dangly earrings on the long ones that kind of flop around, they will touch my neck. And that's a sensation on my skin, right? There are little things, you know, all over uh, socks that are furry inside that you like. It fascinates me too, by the way, my favorite note is a high D tastes like chocolate. Right on. I haven't actually, at some point I need to dive into the different notes and figure out which does what. I just, time. Um, like I haven't had enough time to just jump into that. That would be interesting though. Um, so yeah, um, another thing that, uh, my counselor recommended was decorating my house, my house in the colors I find the most comfortable. So there's a lot of, uh, red, black, red, black, and gray. And that's because that reminds me of my grandparents' house. I used to play in bands as a teen, so got to work it out pretty quick. I'm jealous. I was going to go into a uh, probably band. I was in the music portion where you learn how to read music and all that. And then they un defunded it. So that sucked. Um, so. Um, you know, figure out what works for you. There are online support groups as well. Um, highly recommend. Um, because it's always good to know <clears throat> and actually see that you're not alone and that there are other people who are dealing with the same thing you're dealing with, you know, who are just trying to figure it out, <laughs> just like you are. Um, that was really helpful to me. And now they have apps for it, so it just it's even easier. Um, I haven't used any of them. I, I can't recommend one, but uh, I've heard that there are some, some good ones out there. Uh, speaking of... Oh, Air freshener. You know those water chamber things that people sit in, in the dark and you float, it's supposed to help you with pain, etc. Uh, oh, what are they called? I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name of them. Um, Calm and Calm Harm are great apps. I don't know what... Calm Harm is a good app. What? I don't think that would be good for some people. Yeah, I mean, um, 
I had a friend who tried that one time, but she was really claustrophobic and didn't even know it until she tried it. <laughs> Sensory deprivation chamber. Right. Right, right. See, I would probably like that because I'm weird. Give me like waterproof earbuds and music and put me in there and I, I, don't, I don't think you're supposed to do the music though. If there's no sound, it might actually drive me insane. I don't know if that'd be a good idea. Um, okay. All right. So, uh, so look, if you are on a live stream and, you know, somebody is purposefully, <coughs> in my opinion, uh, trying to trigger people. And if you are triggered, if it happens in this chat or any other chat, your mental health, your safety, and your well being should be the main priority. Um, if it ever happens here, you know, if somebody's in here saying things they shouldn't be saying or whatever and triggers you, do let us know because y'all know I will not tolerate any of that. Same goes for the Discord, whatever. Um, you know, if you're in the Discord and you're having a hard time, let me know. That's why I'm here. Um, yesterday I didn't live stream because, you know, I couldn't. I had a, a, a girlfriend of mine was having a hard time. Um, so I was on standby. Uh, because you never know, you may have to like go to that person or have them come to you. Or usually I would, I would shoot for going to them, you know, but, um, a room with no sound is a type of hell for me. Yes. It is not right. Even if there's a wind chime, I don't care. Like it's just a little bit of sound of some kind. Um, because I, then I'm partially blind effectively. Um, if it happens in this chat, I hope you don't mind me calling it out. No, do, do call it out. <clears throat> we don't want any of that in here. I mean, as of now, the chat is, is chill, you know, but we do occasionally get a troll, whatever. Um, I get pissed off for other pe people. Yes, yeah, so do I. Like in, um, I mean, not to bring it up again, but in Shar's chat, which is usually, usually a very safe space, right? Uh, when Ren was doing like he does, I was immediately pissed off. Real life should always take priority. Never feel bad for putting real life first. Yeah, but I, I hadn't even thought about what I would do if something like that came up. So I think I've kind of figured out a plan for that now. Um, I was in for a sleep study. It was pitch black and soundproof. It was hell. I didn't sleep much. Dumb people defeated the purpose. I wouldn't, I, I don't think I would have been able to sleep. That's weird. I mean, hell, sometimes I'll have music going or like there's an apt, uh, apt, <clears throat> an app. I can't remember the name of it now. Do I still have it? I don't think I still have it on my phone. But there's an app that has like soothing sounds um, that helps getting baby girl to sleep. And I liked it too. Like, so yeah. Nothing, do nothing, the internet can wait. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of my friends have moved away, but Sleep Cove is a channel. He has a pretty good voice. I listen to him often. Hmm. 
REM sleep time takes less than two minutes. It's my superpower. You are lucky. For me, getting to sleep is a mission a lot of the time. <laughs> I have insomnia, which it means it's hard for me to get to sleep. But then once I do get to sleep, I'll wake up like randomly. I don't know. And then getting back to sleep can be difficult. Yoga Nindra is amazing for relaxation before sleep. I might have to try that. Some voices drive me nuts and actually keep me awake. Michelle Sanctuary. Right, right. I can only deal with her on occasion. Huh? Right. Yeah, I have the <clears throat> added bonus of, you know, or sometimes curse of being, being able to see a person's voice. So that can take things to a whole different uh, level. I have to make a new appointment for a sleep study again. I have three disorders, can't sleep, can't hit REM sleep, I think you mean, can't stay asleep, so I don't sleep much, right? True, true. I totally get that, but at least I get a lot of research done. Oh. If I could live stream twice a day, I would actually catch up on everything that I'm like. Rocks. Um, hey, Soundwave, how you doing? I was just talking about our old hangout spot. Um, when I used to go out the back door and just hang outside for a minute. Um, I know how it is. Insomnia and sleep maintenance is part of it. Yeah. REM shouldn't be hit within two minutes of falling asleep. It's not normal kind of sleep. Right, right. I'm thankful I can't see Gilbert Gottfried's voice. Oh, you should be. <laughs> you should be. That is a voice that I will avoid at all costs. Like I hate heights, right? I hate being like on a bridge, but I would look to get away from that voice, the shit I would do. <coughs> His voice is just not right, man. It's not right. All right, so so we've covered all of you know triggering the senses. Um, why do you associate cheese with his voice? I'm sure there's a city that agrees with you hold heart wholeheartedly. Um, I associate mold with his voice. That's the smell and taste. And the colors are, uh, I just, I don't want to go there. Um, well, message me, man. Hopefully something's going on because, oh shit, is it bad? Don't tell me it's bad. Because I would like to socialize a little bit. It has been too fucking long, okay? Stinky cheese. I mean, he seems like actually a nice guy, potentially, but damn, when he starts yelling, fucking hell, man. Almost want to gouge out my own eardrums. And that's saying something. It's bad. Ugh. Wanna, you want to get together and put something together? Because I'm down with that. Totally down with it. I've been, I've done it before. Uh, yeah, he does play it up. He does. I've seen him when he's calmer. His voice is still kind of eh, but way better. Um, he's one of the few people I've ever seen who can actually like 
willfully change his voice, like the colors and all that. It's really weird, and I don't understand. I, I more power to you, dude. You could have changed it for the better, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Just you know, be nice to us, sinnies. <clears throat> Okay. Um, so food is another way, you know, nourishment is another way that you can help if you're triggered. Um, if you're like in a place where you can eat or carry a snack on you, whatever your you know favorite snack is, that is, you know, something you can toss in your purse. Um, I used to carry those little cheese wheels, the, the red on the outside, you peel them. Um, except unless, you know, if you live in New Orleans in the summer, in like high summer, not such a great idea. Um, do not recommend. <laughs> um, you know, just something that uh, is a positive source of nourishment, fruit, something like that. Um, something you can eat really quick, because if you're at work, you have to think about that, right? Or whatever. Um, so, and that was good about the place we used to hang out at. There was almost always food there. So, you know, uh, whistling makes me irrationally anxious and angry. It is irritating. Yes. Especially when somebody just does a loud piercing whistle, just for no apparent reason. Jesus. Unless it's me whistling, right? Robin, Robin Williams did that. His voice changed color, but it always had the same undertones to it. Yes. When he would impersonate people and shit, when he did the uh, the genie and the Disney movie, he changed his color. Did you? What the fuck? I, that's really the only reason I watched that movie was for Robin Williams as... I can't judge the dude too harshly. I sound like a Minnie Mouse, unwillingly, <laughs> sometimes. And I have no idea why I go from sex phone worker to Minnie Mouse voice, but I do. <laughs> wow. That is, that went from zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> you go, Leanne. I mean... I can go from like nicely talking to you here to making people think I'm going to rip someone's head off in zero to a hundred. So, you know, um, <clears throat> let Ren come up in, in here and show his ass. I'll prove that real quick. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So, so I think, you know, another, another thing is whenever possible, if, there is something that's triggering you. Try to cut that something out of your life if you can um, or limit your exposure to it, right? Um, because if something is triggering you, it's triggering you for a reason. So you should listen. Listen to your body. Listen to your brain. Um, they are telling you something. And... You know, it's rather important that you take that seriously. Hey, police wife life, how you doing? What's up? Happy Mother's Day to you. Um, my Mother's Day has been pretty chill. It's been good. Baby girl went over to the, the grands and she's doing her baby thing, playing and and I'm working. That's good for me. Um, <coughs> um okay. 
So do, do you guys want to just continue to the second live stream and just not break it up? Or do you want to break it up? How, how do y'all want to do this? Because we're about to dive into some shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we should just keep this one in particular positive and switch it or what. Whenever I'm on the phone with people, I have to be careful how I talk because... I just talk that way normally. Wow. <clears throat> I can't stand hearing the sound of my own voice. I, it, it irritates me. Um, let's do it. Wait, which, which one? What? <laughs> which one do you want to do? Um, Who is this? Oh, okay. Do you want, all want to go over to Charlotte on the web? And then I can do the second live stream just to break it up. Because I don't know if I want this to be contaminated with the shit I'm about to be talking about. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Let's all go over to Charlotte's and hang. Um, like, without attacking her chat. I'm not saying that in any way, shape, or form to be mean to Charlotte. I don't fully know all of the um, YouTube etiquette yet. So, <clears throat> some Mother's Day funny channel stream. I mean, oh, right on. Right on. All right, so let's all go over and hang with uh, Char. Say hi. Um, and then I will, after that, I will do... Uh, the second street. All right, y'all. Thank you for being here. Remember, you have the right to say no. If you are triggered, you have the right to say, fuck off. Nope, nope, nope. Nay, 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 nay. And leave. Do whatever you need to do. Come back here if you need to, you know, have the calm place. Um, halt checklist is great for working out. Why, if there is a reason for anxiety, <clears throat> hungry, angry, tired, lonely, tired, right, right. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a second live stream because there's there's some shit that we need to, uh, I, I, I need to <laughs> talk about. Um, right on, Ballistic, I hope you are awake and come in for the second one because it's going to be far more energ energetic and uh, whatnot. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, hit all. Uh, we have all of the social medias, and there will be TikTok videos tonight. And um, stuff, lots of stuff, email, um, all that good stuff. And I have all kinds of resources that I put on um, Twitter, and I have put a couple on Instagram, but I don't understand Instagram yet. Shizzles get nervous. Right on. Okay, see y'all in a little bit. Thank you for being here. Shamir, do you still have a wrench? Wait, what is happening? Hold on. I have to go check this because I don't know. You should. What the? Yes, you do. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, thank you for posting all of the information, Shermer, by the way. It's kind of a relief not having to do that. <laughs> all right, y'all. I will see y'all over at Charlotte's <clears throat> in a little bit. Bye.